Even as a child growing up in a Jewish household in suburban Michigan, I was interested in spirituality. I graduated from Columbia University, earned a JD and MBA from UC Berkeley, and clerked for a federal judge in the Southern District of New York. Then I joined a Wall Street law firm, but my career shifted focus from practicing law to teaching law. I was focused on the way that the law defines medicine versus healing. Ultimately, I was recruited to Harvard Medical School. My focus as a faculty member was on helping the Harvard hospitals integrate complementary therapies into conventional medical settings. Then I founded my own law firm, dedicated to businesses and practices that accelerate health, wellness, and healing. From all these experiences, I concluded that healthcare law needs reform with a unique twist. The voice of the law needs to encourage a broad vision of healthcare that encompasses not only physical and emotional health, but also personal growth, healing, and self-actualization. We need this voice to transform our culture from one of anger and violence to compassion and love. We are moving from disease care to a culture of wellness and healing. Where the law overemphasizes the medical aspects of care, legal rules fragment choice, stymie personal growth, and frustrate deeper levels of healing. On the other hand, when the law recognizes and is in sync with our culture, then the law supports opportunities for human growth and transformation. How can law encourage a vision of healing that includes yet is broader than cure? First, by recognizing that healing means more than treating malfunctioning organs or disease states. Healing encompasses epiphanies. Healing means wholeness, sometimes beyond metrics like the peace that surpasses understanding. Healing transforms relationships. Healing can occur at the end of life with expressions of forgiveness or love. Cure is vital. Healing is triumphant. Second, by no longer criminalizing approaches such as those of health coaches, energy healers, and others as unlicensed practice of medicine or psychology. And third, by giving more credit to the autonomous informed choices that people make for themselves in sickness and in health. The kind of healthcare reform I'm talking about has to do not with insurance and economics, but with the attitudes, beliefs, and culture that animate how we construct the law. Our healthcare system and laws should support learning, personal growth, and self-actualization. Thanks for watching. If you still have questions, click on the link below, cohenhealthcarelaw.com forward slash contact to send us a message or book an appointment. Here's to the success of your healthcare venture. We look forward to speaking with you soon.